Peace, oh please. Keep in mind the ease is obvious, and this is the obvious truth podcast, episode three. This is a podcast about conscious and spiritual topics where we dive deep into the nature of our existing reality. And today we have our third guest ever, Aura the Prophet. So, <laughs> so Aura the Prophet, tell us a little about yourself so the audience knows who you are. Um, I'm a my name's Aura, obviously. Um, I am a conscious hip hop artist. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I run a little business, labels, slash studios, slash uh, just a movement in general called Conscious Living Entertainment or CLE. Um, yeah, that's pretty much me. You know, that's what I do on a daily basis. I'm about to be a father, so that's pretty cool. Oh, congrats, man. <laughs> that, that's that'll awesome. be a new title to throw in there. <laughs> yeah, congrats. That's going to be yeah, a big title. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, bro. It's a blessing. Excited. <laughs> yeah. Two more months. Oh, wow. It's coming up. Yeah, it's coming up quick. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Um, how many people do you have on your label? conscious living entertainment um really uh it's like we're not like a full out label yet you know but we kind of like that's the end goal you know like that's what we want it to be eventually but Mm -hmm. um it's mainly just me and um leo dynasty my other uh um and yeah he's uh he's actually over here chilling on a couch but um But, uh, yeah, it's just me and him really doing it right now. But eventually, as we get bigger and bigger, we're going to want to be able to, like, sign more artists and, like, actually scout out, like, more talent and stuff. But for right now, we're just kind of, like, building the foundation. Like, CLE is really just, like, a movement right now, you know, Mm -hmm. more than a label. But it's that that's the end goal for it. (laughs) Right, right. So... You guys are pretty tight. I see you guys like usually like together a lot. I feel like you guys just like good, yeah, good friends, and then you guys start rapping together. Yeah, um, we met each other like um, probably like 2016. So it was like, or no, we started doing music around like 2015. So it's been like five years, and we uh, that's how we linked. And like we knew about each other because we from like live from the sa- in the same area. Right. But um, but we uh we started making like started hanging out like only because of music like we both was like dang you good at rapping you good at rapping <laughs> and I just started and Leah been doing it for years you know so uh, you just started I, rapping uh, yeah I just started rapping in like 2015 okay oh word yeah, yeah that that's when I started first. too <laughs> that's funny yeah. Two- I just started, I always did like acoustic and um, like uh, like indie rock music. That's like kind of ah. like my preferred genre. Uh, and that's what I started off doing, but I never had like a band of people to like form a full band or nothing. So like, I found like a lot of like therapeutic use out of just being able to write lyrics and like realize that I actually had a talent for it. And it, uh, uh-huh. yeah, started so the whole journey. <laughs> right, so so you started uh, making acoustic music then, and lyrics as well for the acoustic songs, right? Yes, 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 yes. I never really, like, recorded anything. It was kind of just, like, you know, something I did in my own room, like, chilling at my house and just, like, or around, like, a campfire with some friends or, you yeah. know, something like that. Um, but I always wanted to do it, but it just – I didn't have the resources at the time to do it, but, like – to be able to make like hip hop music was so easy. All I needed was a computer and a microphone. And I was able, like a lot of my first songs were just recorded off like USB mics, just that plug straight into a computer. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, like, like my first few songs, like peace on earth and like, uh, like all that first, like little mixtape. I did that ancient knowledge shit. Uh-huh. But, uh, but yeah, right. the, but yeah. Do you think you'll ever put cool. out an, an acoustic song, something like that? <laughs> um we're actually just started like i've kind of kind of like been like really inspired lately to like dive into my roots you know and um we actually just started a song yesterday i wouldn't say it's like an acoustic but it's gonna be like all live instruments yeah like it's gonna have like the electric guitar it's gonna have the acoustic guitar it's on the drums it's gonna have the 
real keyboard. Like, yeah. it's gonna be like a live. Uh, it's gonna be like a live album. Everything is gonna be wow. good, scratch stuff, and that's like, and I'm, we're really gonna take our time with it. So it's like not something like I would expect people to like get very soon, but it's right. something that we're working towards, and also learning a lot every day on like how mm -hmm. to approach it, you know, because it's still new to us, like recording live instruments and stuff, but. It, we're 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 gonna get it. <laughs> it's it's kind of like it's kind of like your side project right now for now, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I've gotten I've been grinding really hard this past year. Um, I've got a lot of music put back, and um, so I just was like, oh, I finally like you know I'm prepared to have all this music to release. You know, um, so, how many songs uh, do you think you got? I can focus on this. Um, uh, I don't know. Probably like like. 30, 40 songs. Wow. Yeah, That's with a awesome. lot of uh, big, up, big, a lot of big artists too are a lot of them. I don't want to like say too much on that, but um, mm -hmm. right, because I don't want to spoil it for nah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, but, totally. Uh, but yeah, there's the. It's gonna be cool. There's a there's a lot of cool music coming. I'm just trying to form the right plan on how I want to present it to everybody so everything gets the right, right amount of. Uh, light to it you know right how long does it like take you to make a song oh that's different um i mean it depends like when me and leo get in the booth together and like we and it's like leo or the prophet and leo dynasty mm -hmm. it's we work pretty quick you know like me and him like inspire each other when we're working and i think it like pushes us to get and then we get a whole song done in a day but like when i'm working on like my solo songs mm -hmm. i uh that's where a lot of like really emotional s stuff will come yeah. out. And that's where I like take my time more because like, I wanted everything to be perfect. I feel and especially, yeah, and especially, um, but I mean, that's, but sometimes it depends. I could just be in my zone and get the whole song done in a day or something. But mm -hmm. I, I try not, I've been trying not to rush nothing anymore. I kind of learn, you know, like I got to make sure everything's, perfect before it gets released mm -hmm. <laughs> right right yeah um do, how do you uh do you do you produce or do you like have someone else just make your beats you just cop them off like youtube or something oh uh, no um i uh well leo he's been getting into producing more now mm -hmm. so like you're gonna see a lot of stuff he hasn't released a lot of stuff that he's produced but he has a lot of stuff that we're about to release very soon um He's been, so a lot of music is going to be coming from him. But mm -hmm. then also I work with a producer called Kissico. He's from Canada. He um, produ produced probably like, um, I would say like 80% of my last album, Shadow oh, Reality. Okay. And then he uh, he produced the whole Labyrinth album with me and Leo. Ah, I see. So, and he's he's awesome, man. He was a, he, he's out in Canada. He did all the production, all the mixing and mastering. Um, and that's really, I, there's like a few producers that I've uh, met throughout my uh, music career. And mm -hmm. uh, I kind of just, you know, keep going back and forth with them and just yeah, getting yeah. beats here and, here and there. And they got the sound that I like. So, but I'm always open and looking for new stuff. So. <laughs> do you, do you like, um, do you like go into a, like, do you guys make the, beat like together like this he was he is he like yo do you like this synth or does he kind of just make the beat and like kind of like show you his beat after? yeah well well actually we've been doing a lot of stuff where he's he'll make beats and i'll come in and like get on the guitar put some guitar on it or something ah. like that so you'll a lot of guitar if you hear you're gonna hear a lot of guitar and <laughs> some of the new stuff and then when you do you're gonna be like oh that's now you know it's or <laughs> hey, playing the guitar that's dope have you <laughs> Are there any songs that have your guitar already in them? Um, Maybe a few here and there. No, I don't think so. No, no. Oh, okay. We got no, some. Yeah. We got some acoustic from Aura to look forward to. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, there's gonna be all different kinds of stuff. <laughs> what kind of band? I am, uh, oh, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, you good. Um, I am gonna be dropping that album. Uh. Like the next thing you see coming from Aura, I've already announced mm -hmm. this. So I'll say it. Okay, is gonna be a, a part two, um, 
to oneness. My like first album with like Metamorphosis and like Ooh. when I first like was able to get out and reach people, you know, it was uh that was like a very special album. I have a lot of people that tell me about how uh how much that album helps them. So I was like, I wanna do a part two, but I wanna do it better. So mm, yeah, that's gonna, gonna be, be awesome. a real spiritual album. It's gonna be a lot of knowledge in it. It's gonna be very uh psychedelic <laughs> in a sense. Right. Hey. That's what I love yeah, to hear. So, yeah, so that's that, uh, that's the that's something that's gonna be coming. I have don't have a date for it yet because it's still in the like mm-hmm. I finished it, but I'm just waiting on getting some uh verses back and getting some uh getting it mixed and mastered and stuff. So and then we'll I'll I'll get out of date though soon. <laughs> right. Okay, cool. That's amazing. That's exciting. Is yeah. the metamorphosis is that the one with uh it has a single it's a self a self titled single with AK the Savior on it right yeah hey yeah. okay yeah that's what's up yeah man. the homie bro love that dude man he's cool as hell <laughs> yeah that that's that's incredible that you got to work with him he, he the underachievers for me like they kickstarted my like. They were a part of my spiritual awakening. Like I started listening to them. Like when my, when I start opening up, like you know, to the oh, whole yeah. spiritual world. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I mean, even me too, to ex- to an extent. You know, they definitely inspired me a lot on my spiritual journey, mainly because they were able to like put put it in terms that I could understand in the time that I was in in my life. You know, when my I, like I started my spiritual journey, and it all kind of like. He, they definitely had a huge in, inspiration on like me being like oh well i can actually make music that isn't like a bunch of mumbling and yeah right degrading women yeah i know and blah, blah, blah. you know like just yeah you know, I, I was like i can actually like do something and it gave me like purpose it gave me nice. like a purpose and like a will to mm-hmm. just want to keep working and working and towards you know uh you know yeah you connecting everybody together yeah I, I feel like they really opened up a whole like spiritual rap lane like really yeah. early on are they like yeah. were they like would you say they were the biggest influence in uh getting you to make rap or is there someone else no it? no no i would say the biggest person to like influence me want to start making rap would be kid cuddy oh I'm from no Ohio. way you yeah, serious? Um, Dude, that's Cuddy. my that's would, my number one who inspired yeah, me, bro. <laughs> yeah, Kid Cudi um, definitely is uh, my big like. He was the one that made me want to start getting into hip hop because I like, like I said I didn't really listen to much hip hop um, at the time. Like Kid Cudi was like the only person that um, or like the only like artist that I really was like, geez, this dude's. Like I can relate to everything he's talking about, you know. Yeah. And then I knew he was from Ohio, so I was yeah, like, true. Oh. I was like, I'm gonna have to start looking into this rap stuff. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I was always. Uh, uh, it, it, he was definitely the one that made me want to start uh, getting into hip hop. Right, right. That's awesome. So Kid Cudi and the Underachievers kind of helped to start your your hip hop career, right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that yeah. that the irony and being able to work with them was uh, is a blessing too in itself. <laughs> you have a favorite Cuddy song? Woo! <laughs> That's a tough question, Woo! right? I know. I feel you, bro. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, dude, I, it, it's all based off the uh, the um, the mood I'm in. You know. I feel that. I'm true to that. Yeah, I feel like all his songs are legendary. Like all of them. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 just all good. It depends. One day I might be one the man on the moon one, or then the next two, or like it's just. Yeah. yeah it's true that yeah. I feel okay. All right. Do you have a favorite song of yours? Of like of my music. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Of yours uh, that you made. I think. Um, uh, probably my favorite song that I've ever did that's released is mm-hmm. Plot to Self Destruction. Okay. Yeah, Why is it your favorite? Um, it's my favorite because 
I think that that song out of all of my music would be a song that would help people with mm. like battling with like depression and like mm -hmm. suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. addiction to like drugs because like where I'm from, you see that shit every day. Mm -hmm. And the song wasn't even really necessarily about me. It mm -hmm. was actually about one of my uh, close friends that lost somebody due to like an overdose. And he uh, came in all upset into my crib when I was actually writing the song. Oh, wow. And he was all upset and he left. And then it just kind of inspired the rest of the song. Wow. So, um, and I get people every day telling me how much that song helps them. So I think that's probably, because that's what I do it for, is for that, that emotional high, bro. You know? Right. Like, when you're yeah, really helping like somebody along the journey. Help somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's powerful yeah, I, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. A lot of your music is pretty, pretty spiritual. So, uh, do do you meditate? Yeah, I do. Um, I do it a lot, like in the morning time when I like wake up and I know that I'm about to have to like do something that day or like. Mm -hmm. And I like to do it in water, so I'll just relax in oh, the really? bathtub. Yeah, and I'll like just turn off the lights and have some like calming music, and mm -hmm. that's where I kind of do my my self self work. Yeah. As I should say. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, so yeah, I definitely do. I definitely do meditate. I mean, sometimes I probably should more than I do, but mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, I'm getting busier and busier. But right. I still can't let that affect that uh, that part aspect of my life. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's 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 like every other day, or maybe every two, three, four days. Right. Is, uh, that's kind of what I'm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, probably like three to four days a week, maybe. Okay. Even more, you know. Okay. Yeah. And what's what's your process like? Like, yeah, is what's are your like mental processes like? Is certain you things mean? you think, or is it just completely mindfulness? You just focusing on your I breath, focus or on my breathing? Yeah, mm -hmm. I focus on my breathing and um, just clearing my mind as much as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, like just being able to get out any kind of tension or stress or anything that I've had to deal with throughout the day or the day before or any kind of anything like that. It's just the cleansing process for me, I would mm -hmm. say, you know, right. it's where I uh, focus on myself and getting to know myself better mm -hmm. and also being able to form all the ideas and thoughts and, business ventures and everything um yeah that, i mean that's the best way i could put it into words mm -hmm. do, you, do you do anything like any kind of manifesting like meditations like do you do like affirmations and stuff is that part of your ritual at all um i do a thing i uh i use uh palo santo a lot like when i'm in the studio or, st or when i'm meditating and um, what is that sorry i didn't hear you palo santo oh what bark. is that um it's a bark it's that a bark. You, yeah and okay. a lot of yeah um it's almost like an incense in a sense but, okay um but yeah i do i use that and it's the the aroma of it is just puts you in a very positive like bliss mm. mood um okay and i uh usually before i use it i uh usually just in my mind like before i start like a meditation or i get up on the mic or something i tell myself i just say love all creation hmm. and i always say that in my mind it's actually love the first creation. time i've actually ever told anybody that but it's actually something oh that, wow uh, yeah i do that's awesome so every and time right before you ask me that question though so that's <laughs> uh, yeah well that's what we're doing here so before every time you every time you rap, you say love all creation. Yeah, like when I get on the mic. Right. Yeah. So just connecting to everything and all. One love. Mm -hmm. yep. Got you. That's awesome. Um because that's my intention, you know, like that's right. what I place before I do anything that has to do with my creation you know what i'm saying yeah. and my, my tribute to this planet <laughs> that's awesome i love that man yeah. i love that so where when did your spirituality begin was there something that kick-started it um 
Yeah, the first time that I ever was introduced to it was one of my buddies showed me this YouTube series called uh, Spirit Science. Oh, dude, I knew you were going to say that. That's crazy. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say that, that was the first thing <laughs> that... Uh, that was the first thing. Sorry, someone just tried to call me. Oh, that's um, all good. Th this, uh, it was the first thing um, that ever introduced any any of those kind of topics to me. But um, I think I truly started understanding it was when I was uh, when I when I started experimenting with psychedelics for real it was when it all started to like break the barriers for me. Like I, mm. I was immediately in interested in it, you know, in the right. aspect of spirituality. Yeah. But it took me, it took me that like little push to actually, <laughs> I feel like genuinely understand. And I'm still learning every day, obviously. Right. We all are. So, yeah. You know. But, How old were yeah. you? Like when you when you started, you know, watching the channel. I think that was like four, when I started watching the channel. I was fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, that's pretty yeah. early on. Yeah, I was 14, and then I would say, I think I had my first psychedelic experience in like, when I was like 16. 16? Wow. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, young, too. Young <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a young. Uh, yeah, was, it, was, a young was it like LSD, or was it shrooms, DMT? It was LSD. It was LSD. Okay. Yeah. Um, um. It was, it was it was pretty cool it was uh i don't i know that um i was really young back then so i like i feel like it was just everything was just like real like colorful and like mm -hmm. honestly i just felt kind of like happy it's a little mm -hmm. it's a little blur to me yeah because thinking back i was so young it was 10 years ago uh -huh. but, <laughs> yeah but uh, but yeah i don't know that trip it was kind of blurry, like blurry for me but I would say 18 was when I actually started like learning from the psychedelics and actually started like mm. being able to, oh, being able to uh, teach, like be able to teach people, you know? Mm. Did it take, so did it take like a good amount of uses until 18 or was it like, you took a no, break no. And then I you... tried it that first time when I was 16. Mm -hmm. And then I don't think I did it for like maybe like a few years after that. Mm -hmm. And then when I started doing them, I started doing them like a lot. Mm. Like I started doing them because I like I started taking like LSD and then mushrooms. But it's but that's when I started at the same time, like forming my plan with the music, you know, so like. I think that when I was listening to certain artists like the Underachievers and like artists like Ab Soul and like mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, when I was under when I was using those substances, it helped me definitely like be able to like form a plan and feel like inspiration. Be like, well, if they could do it, like I could do it too, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Have you ever taken DMT? Yeah, you have. Yeah, I've taken it quite a bit of times. I've experienced with it. Um, I love it. You, it I, quite I, a I, mean, times? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I haven't, like, fully broke through. But, like, mm. when, every time that I use DMT, it's more, like, kind of like a meditation process for me. It's more, like, just like I said earlier, like, I'm, like, working on myself, in a mm. sense. Okay. Um, so are like, you out, like... Out, you know what I mean? Like you're like asleep, kinda, and or are you like awake? Oh no, I'm definitely awake. Okay. And I mean, like, I definitely am seeing like, you know, like all the trippy fucking patterns and shit, and mm -hmm. like sacred geometry. But like, I feel like the craziest, like, like the farthest I've got that's like super like like relevant, I guess you would say, mm -hmm. is like the Taurus, like the Taurus vortex. Uh huh. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You know yeah yeah and that's where i feel that's where like i i feel like it's like the farthest that i've been like from to breaking through you're but, saying uh, you saw that or no i was like in it like oh i was like in it like my like i don't even know how to explain it like you mm. know it's a you know how 
it's hard. It's like yeah. <laughs> you think it was like your own like electromagnetic field because that's the way yeah. you know. Okay, so it was you were kind of like feeling the energies, your own like energies, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was more. It was different though. It was like constantly changing and like into different. Nah. I don't know. But the thing that like opened my mind about it so much was that like how much it felt like I was there mm -hmm. and like I wasn't where I actually was anymore you know I was just like on that like border mm -hmm. uh, I don't know it's hard for me to explain yeah of course it's the words. stuff that's beyond words really yeah is that like the most mind opening mind ex you know consciousness expanding experience you would say for you like, yeah Okay. Definitely. Definitely. Mm. Definitely. Okay. Um All right. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Do you, do you still uh engage in psychedelics to this day or do you kind of put that behind you? Um not really as much now. Um just because I don't feel like I need them as much anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of like um just focused on being a father. Um and it's you know coming. that's like you know and you know one day if i feel like i need it because like that's one thing i learned from my experiences with psychedelics is it's not something that you want to you know abuse and like yeah. you know use all the time like it's something you use to heal mm -hmm. and to be able to work on yourself mm -hmm. and it, it's a medicine for real and that's why like i only yeah. really use it when i feel like i truly need it you know and mm. i don't i don't think i need it right now <laughs> right right i got gotcha. you so wait was that was that experience like the craziest or is there like other crazier experiences but that feeling of the of the taurus flow was just the most mind expanding but there were still crazier experiences there was a no there was um one of my more recent experiences was pretty crazy mm -hmm. um I don't know how to, it was like I had my eyes open like most of the time like mm -hmm. I had my eyes open but I was we were like kept hitting the bowl, like we were smoking out a bowl and we just kept hitting the bowl and I decided to, the music that I was playing was just really really crazy and it was just like had the really crazy vibrations mm -hmm. in it you know and um so my eyes are open and then I close them and as soon as I closed them, it was like somebody was standing right in front of me looking at me. Wow. And it was like, and it was like, it looked almost like a, like a darker, uh, like avatar, like the movie. Huh. But so it had you like saw gold it? paint. Yes. It scared me. Cause when I, cl I had my eyes open and then when I closed them, it was like, oh shit, there's somebody Whoa. right in front of me and I immediately opened my eyes again. You know, so it was like a flash, but wow. I but I seen them and that's what like sent my brain to be like, whoa, like, you know, like I was <laughs> literally like got spooked because like my eyes are open, my eyes are open, everything's just like, you know, melting and everything. Yeah. Like, close and there's somebody right in front of your face. Yeah. It was, it, it was the first time where I was like, just completely like mind blown. Yeah, what just happened to me? Like I was crazy. like, because it was so real. It was yeah. so real, and like, and uh, that was, but, but yeah. Was that, that, was, that you was said you were passing the, the bowl? Is that the DMT? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was a DMT experience. Yeah. Damn, Is that dude. what you were talking about? Oh, I just met psychedelics in general, but that's, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, that does, that sounds okay. like it could be your craziest <laughs> out of yeah, all yeah. of that. <laughs> so you, it was probably, it might have been an interdimensional being that was literally actually there. Yeah, exactly. Did, did you like, do you think you, um, do you think there's any like messages there or do you think it just kind of happened and you just don't know what to think about it? Um, I think that um, the reason that it happened it was because of the fact that, like, I was tr kept smoking DMT because I was, like, not breaking through. Mm. And I was like, I want to break through, you know. And I think I, 
that was like a sign for me to be able to it was like it was like here you go here's what you've been wanting to see <laughs> you uh, know what i'm saying like yeah, because i've had it's hard there's a lot of messages and like feelings and emotions that go into every time that i've experienced dmt mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but that but but i but because so, i'm like i said i've did it a lot of times so it's hard right. for me to like pinpoint every yeah trip you know got but you yeah that's definitely one that i was like i think it was showing me like here here's proof that there's like something you know because i was only mm -hmm. had been in that like vortex before you know mm -hmm. so it was like gold colored it was like gold colored you said and like it was like it was like a it was like dark it was like a, it had feminine feminine energy for sure it definitely okay. was like female uh -huh. And it was, uh, had like a, and she was like it black, but it was like dark, dark, like void, hmm. like dark, like, and then it had like gold, like on her face, like tribal hmm. or something. What, was it, was it, was the skin like kind of shiny? Yeah. And but like I said, it was hard for me to like really get a look. Yeah. 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 Immediately yeah. I, I, I was, I, my, I opened my eyes because I got spooked because like hmm. my eyes were open and I closed them. And I seen it. I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> like something in my mind just like got scared. Like I don't know. Yeah. And Did you close your eyes again? Was it gone? Um, I think I immediately told my friend next to me. I was like, "Dude, you not gonna believe what like <laughs> happened?" Like, cause he was just over there chilling, like, yeah. and it was and yeah, and I think I just told him like, but but yeah. And then we ended up just, I ended up just like chilling and like thinking about it. Yeah, I don't think I seen it when I mm. closed when I closed my eyes again. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that that's crazy. It kind of reminds me of my experience where I like, I think I, I believe I had this astral projection. I like literally met these aliens and they had the shiny, they had shiny skin, just like you said. So that was interesting. But they were green, so I don't know. Really? Yeah. And this my morning, buddy said he's, my buddy said that he seen gold like people he felt like he was like abducted like alien mm -hmm. like he felt like he was like in a spaceship and then he uh he uh said he saw these like gold beings like hovering mm -hmm. over like working on him or something mm -hmm. and then he said he came back but he said the craziest thing was was when he was telling his friend about it he said he still felt that energy and he said wow. he felt an energy of them being like you don't like don't talk about it oh shoot dude. yeah like he said and he said that was like he was like the feelings and the emotion i got like after was the craziest part like i'm just wow. like man that's crazy like i've never personally seen that but <laughs> yeah oh my <laughs> but that God. was the story that he told me <laughs> yeah and it's also very very fascinating you say that because during that experience like i felt like an entity right next to me and this morning i had a crazy astral projection i literally felt like this being like walking over to me and i was like trying to reach out my hand because i couldn't see it but like i literally felt like this presence there so like that's cool to hear from you too yeah absolutely yeah have you ever uh have you ever had had a astral projection experience um i no, i i wouldn't say that i have i've mm -hmm. had like very lucid dreams lucid dreams uh, uh yeah i would be i would say that's probably the um mm -hmm. but i've never like no i've never like had an astral projection okay do you have a do you have like a favorite lucid dream like does it one stand out to you um well honestly a, a lot of the times that i had lucid dreams mm -hmm. was um i was I was locked up. I was in JDC as like a teenager. Oh. Um, so, um, and I was I was incarcerated, and uh, they uh, and like so I was at like a super sober mindset state, you know, because mm -hmm. that's been, you know, hadn't had any kind of wasn't smoking weed or nothing like that, mm -hmm. and that's like kind of uh, I had a counselor that came in there and brought me like a book. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, on lucid dreaming and I actually started practicing it while I was in there trying to use my time wisely you know um so yeah. I actually experimented with with that a lot um and 
during those times. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's awesome. What What are the like some of the techniques they talked about? Like the reality checks. I'm guessing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, it was it was more like meditations to do, kind of like just like before you go to sleep, mm. kind of like right. and just like breathing techniques and stuff, and just like um, and like I said, I was a lot younger back then too. That, mm. that was a while ago. I was probably like 15 years old. Mm. Uh, so, so you haven't but, had lucid uh, dreams that much since then. Nah, honestly, I don't because I don't know why, but I think it's because I smoke so much ganja. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that that definitely uh, decreases the REM cycles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I don't really remember my dreams much anymore because of the ganja. And it's honestly been something yeah. on my to-do list, you know. Um, just stop smoking and give it a break for a little bit um, to be What's able the to. Purpose for, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just asking, what, what, yeah, what was the purpose? But you were already saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, just say the question again. Yeah. What, what's like your What's like your purpose for uh, putting it down or taking a break? Uh, put, put, for for the ganja. Yeah. 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 Um, because, well, I mean, everything in moderation. <laughs> you know what I mean? But. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, honestly, a lot of because of my son, you know, I want gotcha. to be able to have, yeah, have a very uh, clear mind going right. into fatherhood and right. being able to make sure that I can get everything done mm. because I'm going to have a lot more responsibility, uh, you know, easier mm. said than done. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, nah, yeah. I feel- smoke a lot of weed over here. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like, like just keeping it real, bro. Like, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah. Um okay. So this is this is to change things up. Do you have a favorite anime? Do you watch anime at all or have you? Um I'm not like oh anime. You no, know, yeah, but, I feel um, <laughs> you know, like um but I definitely uh I I've watched all of Dragon Ball Z. Um I like Soul Eater. That shit was fire. I mm. fucked with that shit. Um Cowboy Bebop's fire. Um but yeah, I'm not like super like yeah i feel yeah i only watched like a few <laughs> yeah. have you ever watched naruto well, a lot of them are in, I, I just don't like reading subtitles like oh <laughs> uh, yeah no i feel you i i can't do that dude i can't well i can't watch by reading the whole time yeah it's like i'll go read a book in that sense like <laughs> yeah have you ever watched naruto um no i have not yo i Never think that's naruto. one that you would really like really yeah definitely it's like real yeah, like emotional yeah yeah it's all about the chakras you know it all about emotions it's super deep it's one of the deepest things i've ever seen in my whole life yeah i really like the avatar the last airbender yeah yeah, yeah. that that's one of my yeah, favorites too it. that one was, yeah, that's one a classic really yeah the spiritual like like it aspect of it all is awesome <laughs> right yeah the chakras and all that yeah um is there uh are there any books that you have been reading or do you have any favorite books um i uh i've been reading the uh ancient secrets of the flower of life i got it on my ebook and yeah when i got time i uh like usually before i go to sleep or something i'll read like a chapter or two mm-hmm. um so i mean i have i'm not the biggest reader i'm more like read like articles and like watch documentaries and a lot of mm-hmm. stuff like that um but i do tr- do make sure that i do read a little bit here and there mm-hmm. no, i'm just not like a i'll sit down and read right like, gotcha. old books. i'm in the studio writing books <laughs> 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 yeah i feel it. Like, do you have a favorite or not really no, not really. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, I like shit. I like the Harry Potter books. I read all them. <laughs> you have really? Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. I they never read those. Are big books, man? You say you're not a reader? Those yeah. are big books. Those are thick. Well, yeah. At the same time, I was lucid dreaming when I was locked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah, nothing new. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they was yeah, good though. Funny. They helped pass the time. Mm. <laughs> Right. Uh, I want to I want to quickly go back uh, to when we talked about the spirit science. 
um i just thought of this like was there a certain like topic from spirit science that like really like got you into like spirituality um definitely the astral projection part of it. oh yeah yeah that was definitely where i was just like whoa 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 and i um i wanted to uh i because I actually, I actually read the book also robert monroe uh, oh yeah Journey i got to him body. yeah 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 i read that too and actually and um yeah that book that that's what like really opened my mind to it <laughs> yeah i know um, <laughs> that book's mind opening yeah but um but spirit science is definitely where i uh i found where i like discovered that topic <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah dude that, that's so funny i feel like you and i have so many similarities like for me like learning about astral projection that dude I, once i learned about that i'm like yo bro I'm, I'm going all out into spirituality like i'm changing my life around 360. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah no for sure that's definitely how i was kind of that was like and then like the chakras and like channeling mm. i think there was like a there was like a fucking part part of the channeling episode where he's like you can talk to your dog and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> i, was I like, remember oh, that shit. yeah this shit is real yeah I'm, then i'm going with this shit yeah right <laughs> but the science aspect of it all is what really made me feel like oh my gosh this shit's like nice. actually makes sense yeah you know? like, right like because there's I, a lot I of science in that video right? actually seeing the flower of life mm. like get drawn because they do it like an animation of it like uh -huh. actually like forming and i'm like i don't know how, that was like super mind opening to me you know like yeah because i'm a young kid and i'm just like geez my parents like didn't tell me they're all christians and shit you know what i'm saying <laughs> so like yeah and that was like i was like wait and that's when i feel like i woke up like that indigo in me i would say you know mm -hmm. right I feel the same way, bro. That's awesome, man. Well, it's yeah. been really real, bro. It's been great. Um, is there anything you want to let the people know before we sign off? Any song or project that she check out from you or look out for in the future? Well, you said the future, but um, yeah. I mean, I'm work. I'm still working on Oneness Volume Two. Um, my boy Leo's got his album dropping December twenty first. Oh, okay. Uh, Oracle, yeah. Oracle by Leon on Dynasty. Platforms, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. That's all that's going on. That's all we gonna let y'all know about for now. <laughs> Didn't you just <laughs> drop uh, Labyrinth though? And you just... Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we just yeah, me and uh, Leo just dropped Labyrinth. So y'all need to go check that shit out. And we just dropped. I just dropped a video with Dizzy Wright. It's oh yeah, 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 dude, that was sick, man. Dizzy Wright's a legend, yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah, smoke that good. So y'all need to go run that shit up. It's doing pretty good. So um, that's a golden yeah. feature, bro. He's amazing. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I would <laughs> say there's more uh, more songs coming with him too. So hey, okay, all right. Word. Yeah. Sounds good, man. Well, it's been really awesome. Thank you so much for being on the podcast, bro. Appreciate it so much. No problem, brother. Man, stay blessed. All right. All right, man. Thank you so much, man. Have a great one, brother. Yeah, peace. All right. Peace. Oh, please keep your mind at ease. It's obvious. Okay.